news talk with Halima Sadia at Tag TV. The COVID pandemic situation is quite critical in Ontario as well as the rest of the world. Ontario government has announced that Ontario will begin moving chronically ill hospital patients out of hospitals and into long-term care homes without their consent to free up spaces for COVID-19 patients. Also, Ontario introduces three paid sick days for workers offered to boost federal sick leave to 1,000. Ontario government has also introduced legislation that it hopes will put the brakes on stunt driving and street racing on Ontario's road. We will ask Conservative MPP Nina Tangri's take on these decisions. I'm joined in with Conservative MPP Nina Tangri from Mississauga Streetsville today. I welcome you, Nina, to our studio. Hello, Halimaji. I sub all the tag viewers. Sastika, Namaskar, Orada. So let's begin with where do you think that Ontario stands as a province in this very critical time of COVID-19? So there are many issues uh, happening right now, of course, with uh, COVID-19 and now, of course, this double variant that we have. Uh, it is very critical. I mean, our hospital ICU capacity is full. Uh, we're shipping patients out of our hospitals here in Peel and Toronto and other areas out to as far as Windsor. Um, you know, it's, a very, it's quite dire right now. But having said that, as far as vaccinations go, we we have hit the 5 million mark. So across the province, over 5 million people have been vaccinated. Uh, there's some really good news uh, coming out as far as vaccinations go. Uh, Pfizer did double up on our shipment. So we've also said that of all the vaccinations that we that will be 50% will be going to all of the hotspots. So that is critical for all of us here in uh, Peel to make sure we can get more vaccines into people's arms. Okay, let's come to another issue. As you said that you are, your government has announced that Ontario will begin moving chronically hospital, chronically ill patients uh, out of hospitals and long-term care homes without their consent to free up space for COVID-19 patients. So how will, do you think it will lower the burden on our health system? So there are many people in a hospital right now that don't necessarily need to be in a hospital set setting, but they do need care. They So the long-term care homes and uh, nursing homes do have the facilities available to look after those patients. So for some of them, they'll be able to move into those locations. The intent, of course, is to do it with uh, their consent and to make sure that the families and everyone understands that. The, and, uh, most families are very uh, good at uh, working with us to make sure that they get into a culturally sensitive long-term care home that will free up that space in the hospital so that if there are more COVID patients and we need more space, just remember, you know, each and every day there are still emergencies happening. We want to make sure if somebody feels that they may be having a heart attack or a stroke or if there's been a car accident, for example, we want to make sure people still go to the emergency department. And that's why we also need to have some beds freed up uh, for, you know, the, the everyday things that are happening because that, that, you know, there are still car accidents happening even though COVID is here. But we need to make sure that that space is available in our hospitals. And one way of doing that is to move some patients into long-term care homes. We have been moving many patients to other hospitals as well um, uh, across the province. Uh, so that has worked very, very well. So uh, we want to make sure that we just continue Continue to make sure that that capacity is available if we need it. So your oh. government has introduced legislation that it hopes uh, it will put the brakes on stunt driving and street racing on Ontario's roads. Tell our viewers how would that help? So what we've been seeing, um, it, it's been happening for a very long time. Previous governments have not taken action on this. But um, what we were seeing, especially during COVID, is that because there are less people on the roads, uh, especially with some of our young people, they've been continuing and doing more stunt driving. So uh, we've seen on the news many, many times where the you know kids have been doing donuts in their cars. There are a lot of people around them. They're hitting those people around them. Uh, all the participants in, in all of these, they're not wearing masks. It's very unsafe. And uh, also excessive speeding. I know close to my office when I first moved in, 
One driver at 60 kilometers per hour was driving well over 200 kilometers per hour. Now, when you're driving at that excessive speed uh, and you're on a regular city road, uh, it's very easy for you to, one, you can hit a pedestrian, two, you can hit another car, or you can actually hit a pole and the pole can fall on your car. It's happened and people are getting seriously injured and dying. So we wanted to take more consequences. So we've increased uh, not just the fines, but uh, license suspensions and uh, taking the vehicles off the road as well. So we want to make sure that people understand, just please don't do stunt driving, don't excessively speed and uh, make sure that not only you can save others' lives, but you can potentially save your own life. So Premium Ford once again calls for uh, tougher border measures uh, as variants of concern um, ramp up. Is federal government helping Ontario in that regard? So yes, Premier Ford together with uh, the premiers of the other provinces too, we've been pushing the federal governments to have more stricter measures at our borders. Um, as far as land borders are concerned, say for example from Quebec and Manitoba, we have the jurisdiction there. That's why our OPP officers are asking people why they're coming into Ontario. And if it's just for leisure reasons, please don't. Uh, we know that there's many people that come for humanitarian reasons or for medical reasons. So that's not what we're talking about. But the big issue is right now is the COVID variants that are coming in here. People that are getting on planes with COVID, some of them don't even know that they have it. So right now for international flights, we require a PCR test uh, within 72 hours of them getting on the flight. But the unfortunate thing is some people uh, perhaps don't have COVID when they're getting on, when they have that test anyway. And then upon arrival, that when they're getting tested, they, they have COVID. Another thing is people are getting off the plane and just walking out of the airport. <clears throat> they say, just give us the ticket. We don't want to quarantine. Uh, that's another way it's spreading. Um, but the real serious issue is that this, uh, double variant that we're seeing coming from India right now uh, is extremely, extremely spreading very fast and uh, the people getting sick are much sicker and they're younger too. So we're seeing our hospitals and our ICU units being filled up with very young people that are getting COVID. So these are not, I'm not saying people are out there partying together. Sometimes they're essential workers. They have no choice and they have to go to work. So we want to make sure that everybody feels safe and, you know, and that's why we're, today we're introducing legislation that we can now now um, have paid sick days for people as well. So I was going to come to that point that Ontario uh, introduces three sick days of workers offered to boost federal sick leave to 1,000. Why did it take too long for Premier Ford to take this decision? So right from the beginning of COVID, we pushed the federal government, like I said, together with other premiers and other provinces and we've continually been telling the prime minister that he needs to have a sickness benefit that we can all uh, work together with and the benefit that they came up with initially was for 10 paid sick days uh, the problem is is you had to be off work at least 50 percent of the week so if somebody for example on a sunday uh, didn't feel well they went for a covid test but they don't have the results for another two days they will have only taken perhaps two days off work um, then they if they tested negative then they go back to work which is fine but if they tested positive uh, then they need more time off. So they had to take at least 50% of the, the, the week off to be able to apply. So uh, that was a gap that we asked them to fill. Another reason was that we asked them to double up on the days um, because when people have COVID, sometimes it's not just two weeks. Sometimes they're sick for much longer. So we asked them to double the time. So instead of 10 paid sick days, we got him to move it to 20 paid sick days. So that was very critical. And also the payments going to people's account uh, was taking much too long. So that did eventually get improved. I think people were getting money into their accounts when they applied in about three business days. But the serious issue was for those people that felt that the the benefit was just not enough. So um, we asked them to double the benefit from $500 a week to 1000 a week. So people, if they feel that they're not able, they're not work, able to go to work, that they don't feel that they're going to lose money and they don't have to choose uh, between going to work and putting food on their table. So uh, after many, many measures and many discussions with the federal government and them not moving on getting payments to people faster, uh, we have decided that we will now have a paid sick days. So you can apply for up to three days of $200 per day. 
So now that's in addition to the federal program. So you can potentially have 23 now paid sick days, uh, which I think would encourage people that if they don't feel well, they won't go to work. Now, this is also going to be administered by the WSIB. So employers will continue to pay their employees. So if I don't feel well today, my employer will continue to pay me. And then the employer will apply to WSIB for reimbursement of up to $200 per day uh, for that time. That way people don't feel that they have to make a decision uh, right away. They can call their employer, let them know that they're not well, and the employer knows that they uh, have the benefit and uh, they can stay home and stay safe and potentially save lives. So when we see the pandemic situation, one thing which strengthens us uh, very, uh, very much hope is vaccine. So what's vaccine situation for Ontario right now? So we're pleased to say that we've passed the 5 million uh, vaccine shots in arms. So that's extremely uh, good news. In Peel alone, we've passed 500,000 people. So over half a million people now have uh, been have had at least one shot in their arms, which is uh, was very critical. But the big problem we still face is that we have a lot of people in Peel still testing positive and we have to find a way to bring that down. So the paid sick leave is one area where people don't feel that they have to go to work. Uh, but of course, the other situation is getting those people vaccinated. So the very exciting part about this is in, in discussions with the Solicitor General, the Premier, the Minister of Health and others, uh, we have pushed uh, here in Peel so that we can have more vaccinations come to our hot zone. So for this week alone, we are actually 75% of the vaccines will go across Ontario, but 25 of them will strictly be used in hot zones. So we're receiving about of all the, um, we have about 10% of the population, so we're actually getting about 13% of the vaccines. But next week that's going to change again. So next week that will be 50% will be distributed across the province, but 50% will be strictly for those hot zones. So we're very, very excited about that. And uh, that way we can potentially get a lot more people vaccinated and the age uh, to be able to get vaccinated will be lowered. And uh, that's it's critical that we're able to get more people with vaccines in arms. There's uh, now pop-up clinics opening up, many workplaces. We're very excited about the number of workplaces that want to uh, be able to set up and get their employees vaccinated. Uh, we've already uh, got everything set up and ready to go with Amazon, with Maple Lodge Farms and Maple Leaf Foods. Um, and there's been some uh, faith-based institutions that are having pop-up clinics and uh, the mass vaccination sites are still there. So we're having more places where people can be able to get vaccinated. And of course, our pharmacies and some of our doctor's clinics too. So I think, um, you know, wherever you can get vaccinated uh, first, please go there. Uh, you can go to ontario.ca forward slash book vaccine, and that will help guide the way. And everyone is very, very welcome to contact my office anytime at 905-569-1643, or they can go to ninatangri.ca. And uh, we're more than willing to help you and guide you through the process. That's so nice of you. So in the end, would you like to deliver a message to the people of your riding and Ontarians? Yes, thank you, Halima. Well, first of all, I want to thank you and Tag TV uh, for getting the message out to people to to make sure that they understand that they need to stay home uh, if they don't feel well. Uh, that really does help curb the spread. And please don't gather with your friends and relatives at this point. Uh, we are seeing light at the end of the tunnel, as we're seeing down in the United States. Um, many, many people have been vaccinated and they're starting to open up and we want to do the same here. Uh, but we still, we are still in a very critical situation. So we do ask that you please stay home and stay safe. And you know that that may save the life of you, one of your family members or somebody else. Uh, but also it's critical that uh, we understand that there are many parts to this. One is the paid sick days. Another one is getting the vaccinations in arms. Uh, the people stay safe on the roads as well so that uh, uh, there are less accidents. But uh, it is it's very critical. And like I said, my office is open to anyone anytime. So please feel free to contact us. Thank you very much, uh, Nina, for joining us today at TAG TV. It's been very, very educational talk with you today. Thank you for watching News Talk with Halima Sadia at TAG TV.